Hello all and welcome to the first ever Vikings with Loki himself. I figure if you're going to talk Vikings, you might as well bring in the God of Mischief. That's damn right. Damn right. <laughs> How are you doing, brother? I mean, I, I might get in trouble if I didn't. I'm not doing too bad. And you? I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Doing really good. Glad to be here. Glad to talk about yeah. this awesome topic this morning. Yeah, so uh, the the main gist of this is I, I haven't done a lot of research on the Vikings, so this is kind of new for me. So uh, for once, I get to kind of sit in the chair and just kind of listen and uh, learn. So today, Loki is going to go over battle tactics. Before we start getting into the history and, and what really formed them, he's going to go over the battle tactics because uh, Hollywood has a really interesting way of doing their battle tactics wrong. Anyway, we'll let Loki go on with that one. The, these were very, first off, these were very smart and intelligent people. What you see in film, what you see in TV, a bunch of a bunch of madmen running in, two axes in each hand, crazy, insane battles, all of that. Just put that to bed. These yeah. were very intelligent people. They lived in an extremely harsh environment. Death was everywhere. And the Vikings believed that from the day you were born, your death was destined. Yeah. There was no, there was no, well, you might get out of it this time or this or that, that your death was planned out. That way they threw everything they had into what they were doing because that's what they had to do to survive. Um, living conditions were very harsh. Everyone was a farmer. It did not matter who you were. It didn't matter how good of a fighter you were. Everybody farmed. Everybody worked to survive. And then they went out and they went biking which is they went, they raided, they pillaged, they brought things back. They wanted, they wanted their people, their tribe to be the best at what they did. The more gold they had, the more items they had, the more things they had to melt down, sell, whatever made them better. So everything was in the purpose of making themselves better, making their lives easier because they had it extremely hard. Most kids didn't survive. Most babies, um, almost all of their women would get pregnant over the winter because they're all stuck inside. They're all stuck in their hearse. They're all stuck in the, the next to a warm fire. You can't farm. You can't go out because everything's frozen. So they made babies. Those babies usually are born late summer, early autumn. I had the hardest amount of time trying to live past that. So when we get into the battle tactics, when we get into how they trained, Every able body man and most women fought and trained every single year. Every single year, they would go to a thing, which is like a big ass party. They would train, they would fight, they would increase their skills. Everyone was responsible for bringing weapons, shields. Nothing was provided. You had to make these things or purchase these things everybody was a part of the military there was no ifs ands buts about it whether you were whether you were a um a lord whether you were a lady doesn't matter you were part of a fighting force this was to protect your tribe this was pr to protect your land this was to go out and go biking and when you look at their battle tactics they they had a very simple two-tier formation if you want to pull up the um yep the program i'm going to explain this and this is very simple so nobody's nobody should get lost here so they had two formations this is a shield wall they would stack soldier after soldier shield maiden whatever with shields with weapons this was to meet a line head on then they had this which connect will probably immediately <laughs> recognized as a Canadian flying V. Damn yes. ducks. Yes. Um, and this was called the pig snout formation. Now what they would like to do, let me get rid of this. This is the way they fought. So you would have a line. You might have multiple lines. This is your Viking shield wall. We've got one, two, Three. Behind that, we are going to have one more line. 
this is going to be your pick and snout, but they are going to stay here in this kind of shield wall formation until they're ready. On the other side, we'll just we'll just call this the English side because that's who they fought more than anybody. This is the English side. Now, they might have a backup army. We've got lines. Each line would come together, and it was almost like a pushing contest. You had swords coming out. You had shields. You've got two, two backup units, one on each side. What the Vikings would do is once they once they felt a, a weakness in the line they would let their other unit know about it wherever the weakest unit was what would happen is this this line would change we'll, we'll say line one right here is the is the weakest link you are the weakest link the soldiers would come in in the pig snout and the Vikings would open up their line in the middle. So they would open a gap. And the pig snout would push into that gap and hit. And hit this line as hard as it could. Once this line was broke. The Vikings would reseal this, this shield wall line. And come in from behind and spread their forces out and attack from the rear, thus decimating their opponents. This yeah. worked, and it worked really, really well. How did they learn this? This is a huge, a huge question to ask, and it's good that that answer will change depending on who you talk to. Vikings did not have a written history, but we know they interacted with the Celts, we know they interacted with Germania. Almost all of those races has in, had interacted before. The Vikings mythology, their gods, their races, are almost toe-to-toe -to -toe similar to Greek and Roman mythologies. Yeah. The Greeks, the Greeks' greatest fighting force ever was the Spartans. And they as well use tactics like this, fighting out of the phalanx. Yeah. You know, the Romans did the exact same thing now the romans fought the celts the romans fought germania they eventually would lose to germania but they had successful campaigns against germania so the celts the germanians almost everyone in europe had interacted with the romans and the fact that the viking gods the pantheon of gods so are so similar to the romans and the greeks a lot of people will say that the vikings the scandinavians learned this technique from either the celts or the germanians and adapted it for their own they kept it very very simple like i said two formations a shield wall and a berserker pig snout going in to attack everyone from behind they did this to perfection they perfected it just like the spartans did just like the Romans did when the Romans were at the height of their power, they perfected it. They trained every single year. Everyone had to be fighting on equal ground. No weakness. Weakness was death. Everything yeah. about everything about weakness was death. If you were weak, you didn't get to go and you didn't get to fight and you didn't get to do this. It was that simple. People that were weak died. People that weren't went out and raided and fought and murdered and killed because they wanted to be the best. They wanted the best trade. They wanted the best army. They wanted the best of everything. Another little secret that a lot of people won't talk about and what Hollywood will keep from you in a lot of the movies and a lot of the TV shows, the Vikings were huge about trading. They traded yeah. just about everywhere, including China. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine a Viking going all the way north, north and east, and getting on that silk trade route and trading with the Chinese. That was yeah. something they did. They learned the language. They learned the layout of cities. They learned tactics. They learned almost everything there was to know about any potential enemy. And yeah. they caught, one of the things they, they called this was tongues. Go and, go and learn the tongue. That meant 
go go here trade with these people and learn how they talk learn their language that way you can bring it back to us tell us teach us and we've got an advantage everything yeah. about this was having an advantage over your enemy having an advantage over a potential enemy information and there was no notes going back and forth because it was a completely oral society they didn't write things down so you went and you traded maybe you spent 10 years in china trading with the chinese you come back and you teach your thane your leader everything you knew i traded with this i learned this language you teach it to him they he'd teach it to other people that way more and more people can go out spread out interact with other civilizations other countries and you had a distinct tactical advantage because you knew more about them than they would ever know about you yeah makes sense it does it does it's information information is power yeah a fighting force like this is power it's yeah. bread and butter um and when i say that some people are going to be like well what the hell is bread and butter loki it's simple but it works yeah it's so simple that if you train with it over and over and over and over and over again you will shock the hell out of your enemies and that's exactly what happened when the Vikings started landing in England, the English were absolutely unprepared for it because they think, oh, they're barbarians, barbarians, bearded barbarians at our gates. They're, they're just a mindless horde. No, absolutely not. And that's the way Hollywood has portrayed them as some, yeah. some mindless horde charging in to just rape and pillage and murder. That's not the way it was. These people were smart. They were hardy, they knew how to survive, and they knew tactics. And they knew what worked and what didn't, what to focus on and what not to focus on. Well, and, and the funny thing is, is, is the way you can prove that this tactic works is the, the tiger tank, World War II. The pig snout, that's the tiger tank's job. Yes. That is exactly the tiger tank's job. It is a punch through tank. It, it's not the, the, the tigers were never meant to be mass produced and be the main battle tank of the German military. The tiger was the punch through. And I'm very was, glad you, you brought that up because let's talk about fear here. You saw a tiger. You almost shit your pants. Yeah. These these berserkers that would be in the pig snout, they would be covered in blood. They would be screaming. This is this is where you get the scare tactics. Yeah. Because they'd be covered in blood, entrails, whatever, and be seething in mass, ready to punch through that line. Yeah. The the, the fear factor. The fear factor. Yeah, they was it wasn't just a shield wall. You had your shield wall, but then you had the crazies in the back. That's job was to punch through, get behind, and completely decimate your opponents. These were the killers. These were the scary guys. This is what Hollywood has tried to depict all Vikings as, and that's not true. No, they but had they had their place. Role. Yeah, they yeah, had a they specific had. role. It's like and beer. Yeah, and. and the tiger is a good example of that because you know when you think tiger tank you think oh that was one of the main battle tanks no no that was never it ended up having to be it was used sometimes as one but it was never meant to be <laughs> it was never meant to be the main, main battle tank that was your panther or your panzer IV, uh, not your uh your tigers your tigers were for punch through and then let the other tanks go but they were to punch through the line and that's now, the yeah. same thing that your 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 pig snout is yes that pig snout formation is your berserker brigade that is going to psychologically screw with the enemy that was a big yeah. thing too when they landed when they landed in england the english believed they were just these crazed barbarians but they weren't they were very smart but everything had its place in in their military in their raiding everything had its place everything had its use you didn't bring things you didn't need and you almost never saw these guys on horses that's a no. that's a big thing 
they fought like this and they didn't have cavalry. The English had cavalry, they had horses. And I know some people are going to say, but Loki, couldn't they just get a horse and use it? A lot of times you can't just grab a horse and use it in a battle. The horse is going to get spooked. The horse isn't used to what's going on. Horse isn't going to be any good for you. But what about saving, you know, saving the leader's legs? Didn't matter. They didn't care about that. They wanted to be the the longest walking sons of bitches in the first yeah. place anyway. It was all about pride. It was all about being the best. It was all about being at your physical best. So they didn't yeah. care about horses. And most of the time you couldn't you couldn't take a horse on a boat anyway. Yeah. Everything was at a premium. Everything. Uh, weapon weight, shields. They 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 hung their shields on the side of the boat because they didn't want to, there there was nowhere to stack them and, and sort them. So they just hung them on the side of the boat. That was the best place for it. You got where you're going. You took your shield off the side of the boat. You went and you did whatever you were going to do. No place for horses. No place for cavalry. No place for any of that. It was it was it was head on combat. But they yeah. were smart about it. They didn't have a lot of archers. Most of the time, if you had a Viking that was that was an excellent archer, those were your hunters. Yeah. Or occasionally a head hunter in a battle. You might have a few archers that stood back, took their aim, and fired, but they were they, it was very placed shots. It, yeah, wasn't, it wasn't just like the, the the British that had the, no. the whole archer squadrons. Uh, or platoons you, you you know they were they were the exception not the rule that's right your and rule all, would be your 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 shield and and axe or shield and sword or and all of this and all of this was about control of force you're where you were putting your force to the most use and they were the very best at this at the time the the celts the Germanians, this is all before, all of the, almost all of that's before the Vikings, but they learned. And they learned and they passed it down generation to generation. And it wasn't just, well, here's the technique we, re, we use. No, they were taught in a actual environment of training. Yeah. You, you got together, you practiced the shield wall, you practiced the pig smout, and the best of them would be placed where they needed to be on a raid or in a battle. Because a lot of the Scandinavians fought each other. It wasn't just about going and raiding. A lot of the Vikings fought other Vikings all the time for control, yeah. for food. Vikings would raid other Vikings all the time for food. And if you didn't have food to get through the winter, that was death. You had to have food to get through the winter each winter. So everything's about survivability for these people. Everything is about being tough and using force exactly where it needs to be. Because you could just you could just open up a line anywhere on this diagram and go in. They wanted to go in at the weakest possible point. That way they could spread their men out to the fullest and attack everything they could and hit them from behind. If you're fighting an opponent from behind and in front of you, you're, you're most likely not going to make it. Yeah. It's very hard to break out of that. And, and a lot, what, what the Romans would end up doing is they'd hit from the side. They yeah. wouldn't do this. They wouldn't use this particular tactic. A lot of the Roman tactic was hitting from the side. This is very Spartan. This yeah. is very Greek and Spartan to open up a line and have a force run through it and get behind the line and attack. Yeah, so Romans, Romans like, didn't do that. Romans like their cavalry, their their their, their cavalry, cavalry, yes, their cavalry, and they, they like to hit cavalry. from behind or from the sides. Yeah, that way you you crumpled the line from each side and you pushed everybody in the middle. You surrounded them and you you killed them all. Vikings yeah. didn't fight like that. They wanted to bust through a line, go go come in from behind and just decimate everything as quickly and efficiently fronts. as possible. Yes, yeah. war on two fronts. Which, as uh, in history, it shows anytime you have a war on two fronts, it doesn't end well for the person in the middle. No. <laughs> it just nope. doesn't end well. Nope, uh, you're squeezed. If you, yeah, if you can successfully give two fronts to a battle and uh, the person in the middle is fighting, the, the person in the middle is almost guaranteed to lose. And, and that's how they won. 
That's how they won time and time again. They they experience losses, and I'm sure we'll get into that uh, in the weeks to come. But yep. they had a lot of victories, yes. and they were severely underestimated. That is something that that cannot be said enough: is these people were severely underestimated. They came in, they knew exactly how to fight, and they knew how to fight better than the English. They knew how to fight better than what would be later known as Britain. Um, yeah, and and not only that, but a lot of like what you said earlier, it, it, it's not just that they were underestimated, but they didn't underestimate who they were fighting. Yes. They didn't make the same mistake. That's right. You know, That's we're right. going to walk into Britain and win. No, we're we're going to maybe trade with these. Oh, whoa. Okay, so that's how they fight. All right. All right. We'll just take that information back. And and, and England, England had a huge amount of manpower. The problem is these villagers were not allowed to arm themselves. Hmm. They were not allowed to fight. They were not allowed to learn to fight. Their job was to farm and to to pay up to their local lord or their king or whoever was there to protect the land. Yeah, and the they best that your, your local peasant would get would be archery. That's right. That's about it. And then what happens? A force of a force of Vikings shows up. These guys are farmers. They they're they're horse traders. They're they're whatever they are. But each and every one of them knows how to fight. And that's why later, later, it's going to be so shocking to the English when a force of Vikings shows up hundreds of thousands strong and completely just annihilates some of these kingdoms because they're pissed. They are very, very pissed off. Yeah. Every single one of them knows how to fight. Yeah. When the one becomes the whole. That's right. All right. Well, I think we'll we'll wrap this one up. So I want to thank you, Loki, for for joining us on this one. And this one will be uh, every month. Uh, Loki will uh, grace us with a new uh, look into the Vikings, and not 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 the Vikings you see on TV, but the actual ones. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna learn learn with uh, the God of Mischief himself. Uh, and uh, you know, anybody has any complaints or, or arguments, they can. Take it up with the big guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I dare you. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that said, uh, thank you, Loki. Is there anything you want to promote? Or, of course, Mornings of Mischief every every Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. Every Monday to Friday. We've got the comic book roundtable coming back. Um, it will be, let's see. Let me look at a calendar because I know we're recording this. The first one will be on the 6th. So okay. at 7 p.m., Seven Kinds of Mischief and the Comic Book Roundtable return on Wednesday the 6th, at, uh, like I said, at 7. And we're going to have it every week. So it's awesome. going to be a, back to a weekly show. There you go. All right. So with that, folks, thank you. Take her easy and have a good one.